Hello and welcome. My name is Meepolis, they, she, he, and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are looking at the translated comic, The City of Belgium by Brecht Evans, and I believe also translated by Brecht Evans. Originally published in 2018 in French and Dutch. This English translation was published by Drawn and Quarterly in 2021. Link in the cards to my previous review of Evans' graphic novel, The Panther. And once more, not rated, but shelved in the adult graphic novel section at my library. Content notes for nudity, sex, dog bite, violence against animals, substance use, cheating, death, and suicide. Clicking over to Evans' website, his, quote, short bio in the third person singular form is... Belgian cartoonist Brecht Evans was born in 1986 and studied illustration at St. Lucas, Ghent, Belgium. His comic book, The Wrong Place, started out as a graduation project and was a departure from the more typical comic art of his earlier books. It won the Harlem Comic Festival Willie Vandersteen Award for Best Dutch Language Graphic Novel and an award at the Angoulême International Comics Festival. He followed The Wrong Place Up with the many year-end best-of list, appearing Panther and the Dutch and French version of The City of Belgium, which won Jury's Choice at the Angoulême International Comics Festival. Brecht lives in Paris, end quote. What keywords came to mind reading this book? Cutlers, nightlife, repetition, friends and strangers, adventure, cities, relationships, and parties. Going on to Goodreads, the synopsis there is, quote, As night falls in the city of Belgium, three strangers in their late 20s, a most dangerous age, arrive at a popular restaurant. Jonah is about to move away. He calls his wife, who's already settled in Berlin, before trying to make plans with friends for one last night on the town. No one bites. They're all busy. Or maybe they just don't want to party. But he's determined to make this night something to remember. Victoria is lively and energetic, but surrounded by friends and family who are buzzkills, always worrying about what is best for her. Rodolphe is consoled by a friend and snaps out of his funk, becoming the life of the party. The three careen through the city's nightlife spots and underbelly, chasing pleasure, or at least a few distractions from the thrum of the humdrum. Each has a series of adventures that reveal them to be teetering on the edge between lucid dream and tooth-grinding nightmare. Vibrantly rendered in Brecht Evans' swirling watercolors, the city of Belgium continues to the critically acclaimed streak of graphic novels he began with The Wrong Place, The Making of, and Panther. Evans' darkly comic stories of characters on the verge of personal discovery people about to become who they will for the rest of their lives, have never been more beautifully conceived, more intricately planned than in his magical new graphic novel, The City of Belgium, end quote. Starting off with the art and layout of the comic, at least these were the part of the book that really jumped out at me throughout. A great balance of not being very conventional, but still being easy to follow. A grid pattern without any hard borders. The typographical colors also helps link the dialogue with different people. The rich backgrounds are a delight, and Evans' use of watercolor is superb. Writing-wise was a little bit less to my taste, but this felt like a very personal thing. A bit of a homebody who can find conversation more than a little exhausting at the best of times, the fact that this book is so incredibly conversation-heavy also sapped my energy more than usual. It was an overwhelming level of show-don't-tell at first. Although, I did feel like I eventually got a better hold on the characters and could tell better what was going on. And needless to say, the characters had a lot of depth and nuance going on. This is not a book of, with any noble characters to speak of. Rather, the city of Belgium is largely populated by flawed and very human characters in a brutal, decadent world. Looking at the different intersections, as I do... Assumed heteromonogamy, or whatever you might call it, is a thread that weaves in and out of the plot. There may be some more diversity of sexuality demonstrated in a background somewhere, but they are so detailed at times that it's hard to register everything going on. Gender seems to be fairly binary, although pretty well balanced. Even the nudity balanced out in the end, which earned Evans a few bonus points in my book. Race, on the other hand, felt like it was stepping out in a way that felt off, but I'm not entirely certain. On the one hand, we have a really impressive array of character designs, some of which seem to point towards a range of fictional racial diversity, but some of it also seems to at least flirt with caricature. 
More noticeably was the use of perhaps Orientalist architectural features. I wasn't able to pin down any opinions about this particular book, but this year has seen a number of articles passing through my life about the Orientalist nature of cyberpunk for example. And this feels like an echo of some of the elements, but I'm certainly not an expert, particularly when the context is across the pond. Class felt like the most brushed over issue. Ability versus disability came up in a small but interesting way, as one of our characters in their journey through this exciting city night spends some time partying with another person in a wheelchair. They eventually must part ways because of a lack of accessibility. Again, I'm not the final judge, but it seemed like a very interesting choice that at least highlights that people who use wheelchairs to get around can also want to go out and party, but also didn't erase the lack of accessibility that they are likely to run into. Bye y'all, keep reading, and organized and capitalist oppression. And literally graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional landholders. Which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anamishnabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron Wendat Nation.